Did you know that in 2015, Amazon accounted for 53% of overall e-commerce growth in the United States? And in 2021, that number jumped up to 83% of overall growth in the US. Astonishing numbers and just goes to show you that Amazon is controlling the world of commerce as we know it. But just being on Amazon is not enough. You have to be proactive. You have to get in there and you have to do the work. I like to use the analogy that Amazon is sort of like T-ball. The T will hold the ball up, but you still have to eyeball it and swing like hell in order to get good contact. Amazon will hold you up and it will give you a lot of tools and systems to be able to use, but you still have to have people on your team getting in there, doing the dirty work in order to make best use of the effective tools that they have. So let's use this tutorial to get into it. Selling on Amazon is something that I recommend for just about every single consumer product brand out there. And the simple reason is because they have built a consumer commerce engine like no other company on the internet. They truly have built the perfect selling engine and they've allowed all brands to tap into that. Now, as brands scale up, they may scale off of Amazon or decide to pull their product uh, uh, line from Amazon altogether like Nike did. But for most of us out there that are trying to sell as many of our product to as many people as possible, Amazon is one amazing place to do it. I think of Amazon sort of like T-ball, right? The game of T-ball is uh, uh, provides an unfair advantage. You put your ball on top of a T, it holds it right there in one place. All you do is you stare at the ball, you swing the bat really hard, and if you get really good, you can sort of control and, and, and connect really well to hit a great ball every single time. That's why kids start learning on t-ball. Now, uh, baseball fanatics out there might tell me that that's not a good way to start teaching your, uh, your kid how to play baseball, but in this reference, Amazon provides that unfair advantage. Amazon props up and gives you the tools and support you need uh, to be able to grow your brand and sell your products on Amazon. It provides the customer service that you need. It provides the shipping and logistics that you need. It provides the ad platform that you need. It provides the actual place for you to list your products that you need. And it charges you a fee you know, to do that. So that's why Amazon is, in most cases, an unfair advantage, and I highly, highly recommend that you do your homework and find out if your business can be profitable paying Amazon fees, because if it can, you need to get it on Amazon. And in this tutorial, in this video, I'm going to tell you how a step-by-step -step process uh, of launching and growing uh, your brand on Amazon would go. So for those of you out there, you've got a successful e-commerce company, a successful retail company. Uh, maybe you have $10 million, $20 million in revenue. You're sold through stores like Target or Home Depot or whatever. You've dabbled in e-commerce. You have your own website. It's trickling in a few sales here and there. Maybe you're even on Amazon, but you're not really putting in a lot of effort into it. Uh, or you're relying on Vendor Central, uh, which is Amazon's sort of wholesale side of the business. Uh, to sell your products. This tutorial is going to tell you how to step-by-step -step sort of take control of your Amazon account, uh, tap into FBA and Seller Central uh, if it's appropriate for you, and uh, hopefully find some serious success. The most powerful e-commerce platform on the internet. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to go through step-by-step, -step, about 15 steps uh, that you can use to grow your product line and revenue using Amazon. So the first thing you need to do is you need to do your research. I mentioned it. You need to make sure that you know that Amazon's going to charge you 18% in fees, give or take, and you need to make sure that you have more of an 18 more than an 18% profit margin to be able to make money on Amazon. Or you can reduce your costs of goods uh, uh, production, things like that, to be able to make up for that difference. So let's assume you have a 30% margin, 40% margin, 50% margin even. Um, depending on where you do your manufacturing and how your research and development and product development goes, right? So assuming you have that percentage, that means you can make uh, 10%, 20%, 30% on top of selling on Amazon. Now, in many cases, you're going to have those fees anyways, even off of Amazon. If you're selling through a website like Shop Shopify, if your website lives on Shopify, you're paying Shopify fees, you're paying um, credit card processing fees, you're, you're paying app fees. So 
uh, compare these the the com the margins that you can get on Amazon in your other channels. But don't just compare margin to margin because again, Amazon provides unfair uh, tools and services that a lot of other platforms either allow you to do, but you have to do it yourself, like Shopify. Sure, there's customer service apps and there's chat bots, but you have to set those up and monitor those yourselves. On Amazon, they literally handle all the customer service. And then if there's a problem with the product, like it's it's faulty or something like that, that falls through to you, but they'll handle the actual customer service and making it right by the customer, right? Just like on Shopify, Shopify will uh, provide you tools to connect your own shipping, uh, but you still have to ship the product out. With Amazon FBA, which I'll go over in a minute, you don't have to do that. You send your products out to Amazon and they handle everything. So even if the margin is similar to other uh, commerce platforms that you're using, the amount that you're saving on the efficiency side of things and the scalability is insane. Okay, so do your research. Do your research, make sure you can actually make money. Step number two is you sell, set up your seller account. So if you're selling somebody else's product or you own your own products, you own your own brand, and you're using Seller Central uh, to grow your uh, business on Amazon, uh, then you need to set up your account. You just need to put in all the business information, uh, your tax ID number, your address, your contact information, things like that. Uh, connect to your bank account because you'll have to pay Amazon for some things like chargebacks, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but you also have to pay for advertising, which we'll also talk about in a little bit. So you have to just set up your seller account Go on to Amazon, it's super easy once you set it up, they'll, they'll take you step by step through that. Next, you need to create your product listing. Okay, when you create your product, product listing, again, Amazon takes you step by step through a lot of these things. But it's very important to make sure that you know how and why you're going through this listing setup. So for instance, your title is extremely important. The title of your product is important because not only does Amazon's algorithm use it to place you in the search results. Uh, it'll use keywords and phrasing in your title to determine when you should show up for a particular search that a customer is putting in there. In addition to that, when a customer is actually looking through the Amazon results, uh, they're going to look at your title. So it's also really important just for the user experience. So you wanna have something that's gonna catch people's attention. Now there are rules and regulations that Amazon has that will tell you what you can and can't put in that title. But for the most, most part, as you're creating your Amazon listing, go through title should be, uh, should have important keywords at the beginning of it. Um, it should be uh, uh, descriptive, but attention grabbing as well. So that when somebody's scrolling through, they can, uh, the, your listing hopefully stands out. Uh, also as, as part of your product listing is the description and the bullet points. Those are also very important. You should have keywords in there as well. I'm not going to get into it in this video, but there are software programs that can help you build these listings and do your own keyword research. Uh, one of them is Helium 10 that we use at Good Monster. It's very effective and it helps you to build your uh, listings, feed Amazon's algorithm a little bit more. It also helps with PPC. Um, Helium 10 does. Uh, as well as when you're building your product listing, another important thing is your featured images. Again, Amazon wants specific things. They want your main featured image to have a white background and just show the product so it's very clear as to what the product is. But your featured images are really important because that's something that people will see. It's one of the first things they see is what is your product? What does it look like? So not only the main image, but also the other images included once somebody clicks into a listing is very important. You want it to be descriptive. You want it to show how big the product is, how big or small the product is. Um, uh, you can even add a video in there that shows the usage of the product. So your featured images are really important. Those are the main areas when you're starting out, your title, your featured images, your bullet points, and your description. Now, to, co to truly complete your Amazon listing, uh, adding in A plus content is really important. A plus content is when you scroll down below those sort of main areas, the bullet points and the descriptions. That's where you can put in graphic design, images, uh, and even videos down below. So this is the area where somebody has found what they're looking for and they want to learn a little bit more about your product. They'll scroll down and this is where you can sort of market to them and, and, and provide them some visual examples that can hopefully help you sell them your product. So that's step three. Your product listing is very important, but you need to create your first one when you're setting up your account. Next, you need to determine your shipping strategy. So 
there's several different sides of Amazon. Number one is Vendor Central. As I mentioned earlier, that's the wholesale side uh, where Amazon's buying your product from you, like a traditional retail store, and then they basically decide what to price it at, what to do with it after that. Okay, so that's reserved for product manufacturers. That's actually where Amazon started. They started with Vendor Central. Then they opened up Seller Central, which is more for third-party sellers. So if you're not the manufacturer, but you are selling a particular product, you know, you're a broker or, or you're, again, a third-party seller, Seller Central is designed specifically for that. But it still has use for the, the manufacturer. We use Seller Central, manipulate price, to set price, right? Because if you sell directly to Amazon, they're going to say, we'll buy it from you for whatever, $10, and then we decide we want to sell it for $20. On Seller Central, you're basically borrowing Amazon's platform and you're saying, we want to sell this product on Amazon for $21. Amazon has no say over that because they're not they're not buying the product from you. They say, sure, go ahead, go for it. We're going to charge a fee, a commission on that, but go ahead and sell that for $20 or $21 or whatever. Um, once you start to get sales at that sale price, if you are a manufacturer, you can then go and apply for Vendor Central and show Amazon, look, we've been selling this product over here for $20. Uh, it's a great seller. You should buy it from us. And we'd like you to buy it from us for you know, X amount of dollars, $8. You can negotiate that because it's already a selling product, right? So you have proof uh, if you're a manufacturer and you start uh, to grow your brand and manipulate your listing and set your prices over on Seller Central. And there's two shipping strategies underneath Seller Central. There's FBA, which is fulfillment by Amazon, which basically means you say, Amazon, I would like to sell 100 of these items. They say, okay, send them to us. We'll store them. We'll ship them. We'll handle returns. We'll do all of that. The other one is the Merchant Fulfilled Network. Uh, and the uh, older term of this is FBM, for Fulfillment by Merchant. But the Merchant Fulfilled Network is basically that you borrow Amazon's, you lease Amazon's space on their platform to market your product, but you handle everything else. You handle the shipping, the customer service, the returns, right? So in order to do the Merchant Fulfilled Network, you have to be able to ship out an individual product. You know, if I order this phone, you have to be able to ship that phone directly to the customer and you better be able to do it fast because people expect when they're shopping on Amazon that they're going to get a product in a day or two. For most brands, we suggest FBA. It's worth the fees. It's worth not handling it. And it allows you to focus on other areas like your e-commerce platform, your website platform, maybe retail relationships you have. So we usually suggest FBA. Uh, but you need to pick your shipping strategy and pick which one you're going to do underneath uh, Amazon. In some cases, especially if you're a man man manufacturer, you could do both. Uh, and you could do all three. You could be on Vendor Central, you could do FBA, and you could do uh, the Merchant Fulfilled Network for some items, especially if you go out of stock or Amazon goes out of stock. You could fulfill some of those items, keep them selling on Amazon, and just ship them directly. But you have to pick that. Next, you need to choose a product category. Really important. You will have some limitations based on what your product is, but it's important that you know all the categories that you could list your product under because some of them are more competitive than under others. If you pick a category like electronics that's super competitive, it's going to be harder for you to rank. It's going to be harder for you to run PPC campaigns. It's going to be harder for you to do a lot of these things um, because you have so many other competitors doing the same. Likewise, if you can instead list your product in something that's less competitive than electronics, you know, home goods or something like that, and you get approved for that, if it's less competitive, you have a greater chance of showing up when somebody searches for your product in that particular category. There's less competition. So pick your category. Uh, after that, you need to set your prices. As I mentioned, with FBA, with uh, the Merchant Fulfilled Network, which all is all under Seller Central, you set your own prices unlike Vendor Central, where Amazon sets the prices. You need to set your prices, and you can change these, but just know that it's important that you do your research and you don't start too low. You can't very easily raise your prices on Amazon. It's tough. Uh, Amazon doesn't like it. Customers don't like it, especially if you get some traction with a particular price, and all of a sudden you bump it up $5. That could hurt you. So in general, try to start a little higher um, and then decrease if you think that you're not getting enough sales. 
The other strike the the other strategy you need to figure out with pricing is a flat rate or a fixed price or a dynamic price. Now, fixed price is just what I mentioned. You set your price and then you see how it goes, and then if you want to reduce it, you go ahead and reduce it. With dynamic pricing, this is a relatively new concept specific to Amazon. Amazon itself does it with all of its products, which is basically the price moves up and down based on algorithm, supply and demand, uh, search volume, all those things. Uh, you can't really do that through Amazon directly, but there's other price, there's other software programs. Uh, Repricer Express is one of them. Feedvisor is another one that will shift your price up and down based on these different metrics for you, and it will then submit that price to your Amazon account. So it will do it through its software program, but it will be reflected on your Amazon account. Um, you know, this strategy, it really depends on your business. Flat fixed rate is easiest. Um, and then once you get your brand growing, you get more products out there and, 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 and everything's, you're trying to work on efficiencies, then you can maybe move to dynamic pricing. Um, and you can set limits. You can say, you know, don't go below this price and don't go above this price. Uh, next step, build your first shipment. This one's pretty turnkey. It's step-by-step -step through Amazon. It will tell you exactly how to do it. If you're through FBA, if you're a merchant fulfilled network, uh, you're going to have to do a lot of the work yourself. Your team's going to have to pick and pack and, and do individual orders. Amazon will still facilitate this for you. It will send you the notification of who ordered, what's their address, what's their contact info, all that stuff way more time consuming, but more profitable if you have the team and the ability to do it internally. But you do have to set up that first shipment and then go ahead and ship your products. If it is through FBA, it's relatively simple. Amazon basically says, here's who's going to come pick up your product. And here's the date and time that you need to have it ready. And that's it. Um, uh, also, by the way, with shipping, the FBA, you're shipping a pallet or you know a large quantity to Amazon, and then they're shipping it out individually. So that makes it much more efficient, right? That's why you, they charge you some of that commission. But if you're doing the Merchant Fulfilled Network, you're sending out individual orders, right? So you're not shipping out a pallet to Amazon. You're sending one phone to Susie and you're sending another one to Frank and so on and so forth. So make sure you understand the differences there and what your capabilities are. Next step is once you start shipping your products out, you need to manage your inventory. Eventually, hopefully, you're going to run out of products, but you don't want to wait till you run out. Otherwise, your listing will show that you, uh, you're out of stock. And once you're out of stock, nobody can order your products and your listing will get suppressed. So you need to make sure that you're managing your inventory appropriately. Um, and there are programs out there that will help you do this. Uh, we use a bunch of them, as I mentioned, Helium 10. Actually, I'm not sure if they do that. They're more listings in PPC. Seller app is another one. Sellix is another one. Uh, but they can basically, you can set thresholds so that when you get below, let's say, 10 items, it'll notify you. And in some cases, you can even, it will build a purchase order, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, a shipment order for you, right? So if it gets below 10, it will automatically add 100 items you know, to your shipping um, itinerary that then you need to ship out and submit to Amazon and ship out, right? So you need to make sure you have a man, uh, inventory management uh, system that is connected with Amazon. You, you may have an ERP internally that can help do that, or you may use one of these softwares, but either way, somebody needs to pay attention to managing the inventory. Uh, also disclaimer is as you scale up and as you grow, this is a full-time job. Somebody who's picking and packing and uh, managing the inventory and knowing when to ship items back out to Amazon. So this is a, a not complicated system once you have it set up, but it's a time-consuming one. Uh, hopefully it is because you're growing and, and getting really busy. Step 10, invest in Amazon advertising. This is key. Uh, currently, Amazon gives preferential treatment to those who are advertising on their platform. I mean, sounds Maybe unethical, but that's the fact of the matter, right? So uh, this is especially important if you're a new brand because you don't have any clout on Amazon. You don't have any reviews. You don't have good product uh, sales to tell Amazon's algorithm that you should show up first when somebody searches. So how do you fix that? You run ads, and they appear at the top as a headline ad. Um, you could have a brand ad with like three or four different products there. Uh, or two or three different products. Um, 
uh, when they click it and then it leads to a brand page, you could run specific sponsored product posts, which show up on the first and, and or second row of Amazon. And this is an individual product, which you're paying to get on the top of the search results, right? So invest in pay, invest in PPC, Amazon PPC, because it will help get your brand off the ground. And even some of our biggest clients at Good Monster, we still run a lot of PPC because we want to stay relevant. We want to stay above our competition. And even if we rank high in the in the Amazon search results, we still want to be everywhere. We want to be in the headline ads. We want to be in the sponsored ad, uh, product listings. And we want to rank first because that increases our chances of getting click-throughs and sales. Step 11 uh, is to make sure your keywords are in your product listing. I already touched on this when I talked about building your product listing, but I want to say it again because it's very important and it's something that you should revisit. So analyze the performance, the sales of products, and go back and make sure that the right keywords are in your titles, your description, your bullet points, because it will tell Amazon's algorithm what uh, search terms you should rank for. And those could change, you know, search trends change, you know, seasonally, right? So during the holiday seasons, during Black Friday, Cyber Monday, search terms are different and at different volumes than other times during the year. So make sure that you have uh, those keywords throughout your product listing in the right places. You know, don't just spam like keyword, keyword, keyword. You can't do that anyways, but make sure it's naturally added into your product listing. Step 12, create a strong brand identity. This is one of the most overlooked pieces of being successful on Amazon is to make sure that you're not just relying on Amazon to do everything for you and sell your products for you. I mentioned the T-ball analysis in the beginning is Amazon will prop you up and give you a lot of the thing, things to, to be successful, but you still have to swing the bat. You still have to look at the ball. You still have to connect and you still have to hit it to where you want it to go. So you still have to do some work and that work is reflected in creating a brand identity. Just think of some shoe company, Shoe XYZ. You search on Amazon and you search shoes, sneakers, let's say, um, uh, athletic sneakers. And shoe brand XYZ pops up and it's got no reviews and you have, you've never heard of them before. What is the chances you're going to trust that enough to buy it for 50 bucks, right? When right next to it, you see Under Armour and you say, I know Under Armour. I know their brand. They're a good sports brand. They make shoes. Uh, the Rock uh, has his own Under Armour line. Like they're reputable. I'm gonna go buy those shoes for fifty or seventy-five dollars because the brand is there. Now you shouldn't expect to be the next Under Armour, but you should do your work over on social media. You should have your own website. You should partner with influencers. You should run your own Google shopping ads and and Instagram ads and create TikTok content and all that stuff. Because if you grow your brand off of Amazon, it's going to make people want to come over to Amazon looking specifically for your product, number one. Or number two, when you are positioned next to your competitors, they're going to recognize your shoes as the, uh, a reputable brand, something that, somebody that they trust enough to buy them, right? So build your brand. You can do it on Amazon with A-plus content on the listings, as I mentioned, but you really need to focus on off Amazon brand building to really maximize your revenue. Step 13 is use Amazon reviews to your advantage. Now there's actually a huge sort of scandal going on right now. There's cus there's a couple companies that Amazon busted basically offering that brands could buy reviews. So there's a crap load of fake reviews on Amazon. They've known it's a problem, but it's been hard to, to cut down on. So uh, they've found recently two large players in the space that basically broker reviews and have uh, s submitted lawsuits against them. So you need to be careful with how you approach getting reviews. It's actually against the rules to ask for reviews, Amazon reviews, in exchange for anything like discounts or free products or things like that. There's definitely brands that do it, but it's risky. It is risky because if Amazon does research on your brand, which they have a whole team to reach research brands, and they happen to do a test order on your product or pick one of your products out of the FBA shelves and open it, and they see that there's a card in there that says, hey, register this code to get a free pen if you leave us a good review on Amazon, they can shut you down, right? So you need to do it naturally and organically. One way is to put an insert into the box 
and just ask for a review. It's the first thing they do. They open it. They say, and the card might say something like, thank you so much for your purchase. Please try our product right now. And if you love it, go and leave us a review uh, on Amazon. You can even let them know that you'll, you'll be sending an email asking for a review you know, in a day or two. So just ask naturally for that review and also make sure that the experience, the unboxing experience, uh, the product itself is very useful because it increases the chance you'll get reviews. There's also opportunities uh, to get it using Amazon's Vine program, um, which is basically you, <laughs> funny enough, you pay Amazon who then pays these people to test your product out and if they like it, they can leave a review. So it seems a little weird because I just told you that Amazon doesn't allow you to give people gifts for leaving reviews, yet they will give them payment for leaving reviews. I don't know. It's weird. But anyways, it it's a fact of the matter. You're not going to get more than a couple reviews or tens of reviews or so like per month. So it's not anything that's going to change your Amazon game, but it can kickstart you and your uh, brand launch by getting a few reviews on that product. Uh, and then step 15, monitor your Amazon performance. Uh, obviously, this should go without saying, but live in the brand analytics dashboard, uh, which is something you have to apply for and get in there. Um, uh, if you're a third-party seller, you need to try to find access to these. There's third-party programs that can help you do this, like Shopkeeper is one of them, um, uh, and, and you, it will help you manage the data. Um, it's limited. It's not like you're going into Google Analytics where you can see conversion rates and click-throughs and all everything like that, but you can get some data on your best-selling products, um, you know, sales volume, things like that. But measure what's going on in Amazon and what products are driving the most sales and which ones are not, um, and then try to dig in and find out why that might be, uh, which ones are getting the most reviews, all of that kind of thing. Step 16, reduce chargebacks and fees. So as I mentioned, Amazon's going to going to collect commissions on you for using their platform, for, for selling on their platform, for using their logistics powerhouse of a system um, for ads, things like that, right? So the way Amazon usually works is they'll take the money that, that, they're, that you're making on sales and they will take their cut before they deposit it into your bank account. So let's say you make a million dollars on Amazon and it costs uh, $300,000 in total fees and PPC costs that you spent to acquire that business, they'll take that $300,000 out first, and then they'll deposit the rest into your bank account. But you want to reduce the amount of chargebacks and potential fees. And there is a long, long, long exhaustive list of fees and chargebacks that Amazon um, has the potential to give you based on quite frankly, just not following the rules correctly. And so it is important, uh, this next one, I'll, I'll skip right to 17 while I'm talking about both of these. Step 17, stay up to date with Amazon's policies because these policy changes could affect the fees and chargebacks that you have. So a chargeback is basically when a customer says, this is not a charge that I approve to their bank. It might be they received the wrong product. It might be that they um, received a damaged product. Uh, wrong color, wrong size, I don't know, any of these things, right? And so if they if they uh, uh, do this, uh, you're going to get a charge back by Amazon. And the fees list, again, is way too long, but you could, you could be hit with fees if you don't label your products correctly, if you don't package your products correctly, if you break the rules of how you're packaging your product, if you send the wrong products too many times. There's a whole list of fees. So basically with 16 and 17, step 16 and 17, which are our last steps um, to getting set up and started on Amazon, is just make sure that you uh, you know Amazon's rules and you have somebody who's following them to a T. Uh, we usually recommend that your warehouse, your factory has a simple checklist. Every time you're going to fulfill an Amazon order, you have a checklist that you go through and make sure every single one of those items is checked off before you go and send the item out. So that's it. 17 step, I think I said 15 step, 17 step process to getting yourself up and running on Amazon Seller Central. Um, and from here, it's a bit of rinse and repeat. By, by doing this, you've set up the systems and now scaling relies on further optimizing your listings, 
uh, trying to acquire more and more reviews, building your brand as big as you possibly can on and off Amazon, following Amazon's rules to a T and just being a good seller. Uh, and that right there is one of the reasons why certain brands don't like Amazon is that they're very strict about their rules. But the fact of the matter is they're so strict because they want to ensure the perfect customer experience, which is their value in the first place. So just follow the rules. Thank you everyone for watching uh, this tutorial on how to get set up on Amazon. Hopefully it was helpful. If it was, please subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be putting out so many other tutorials on e-commerce and how to improve your e-commerce performance and ultimately make a bunch of money for your brand on the internet. So hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.